Okay, here we go. We're going to start taking this uh, slave cylinder off. So, first tool we're going to use is a box wrench, combo wrench with a ratcheting end. It makes it easier. It's kind of a tight spot. You can do it with a regular. This is a, what is this, 13 millimeter. I got a little catch pan here to uh, pick up any fluid that comes out. And there's some fluid coming out. Let me grab a rag. I'll just help keep some of the mess from getting too crazy. And that fluid goes in blue. It's coming out brown, which isn't a real great sign. All right. You keep track of your washers. You can't reuse washers on a banjo bolt. Well, you shouldn't. You can do just about anything you want to. But uh, that's in a little holder there. So we'll pull that out. And get it up high which will help keep some of the mess down so there's a good amount of cleanup that you got to do when you're all done with something like this your swing arm is right under there so unless you're taking the whole thing apart then uh, you got mess and that's actually the easy part getting that banjo bolt out because now you got to get the actual slave cylinder out, and that's a little harder. You need a, what is this, a T30? Let's see, yeah, that's a T30. You need a T30 Torx bit, and there's two bolts putting it into the housing. One is here on the bottom side. That one's relatively easy to get to. Now the last time I did this, I had the whole swing arm off because I was doing some other stuff. Swing arm off means you got the shock off. And having the shock off makes this second bolt that you got to get to super, super easy to access. So I'm not entirely sure how we're going to do this. It may have to be by feel. I'm using a short extension on this, which I may not be able to get in there. So we're going to have to find it. Let's go around the other side and see if we can see it. So it's a lot easier to see from this angle. All right, so it turns out that that bolt is not an actuality a T30 Torx, like I said, but a five millimeter. And, uh, George hooked me up with a long five millimeter and an extension so that I can get to that other bolt. And there it goes. Use the right tools makes the job really easy. Go figure. So we're gonna pull this other bolt out. And that will let us pull the whole slave cylinder out. Comes off the end of the push rod. The bolt. And sure enough, look at there. That's a five millimeter. And the guts of the slave cylinder don't actually look that bad. The seal looks deformed and there looks like some extra grease gunk in there. Got here. Clean that up a little bit. Yeah, that actually doesn't look bad, which I'm guessing is an even worse sign that the fluid was brown and that the slave cylinder wasn't working. All right, well, let's pull that push rod out, see what happens. There. Uh huh. Squeeze tight and then pry it against the back of the 
this. And then move my hand this way. Yep. Oh, you just got to break it loose. Uh oh, the shock's in the way. I can't get it out far enough to see if there's any oil on the other end of it. But the felt thing is definitely wasted and soaked. That's wet. But that does not look bad. So then why is my... Well, I can't put it back in without that thing on it. All right, now we're gonna, um, we're gonna pull the starter off so that we can get an eyeball on the clutch disc. So we gotta start by taking off this cover. That's another, that's the same, uh, what is that? That's a T30. So that's a torque. And then this just wiggles out, supposedly. Okay. <laughs> so after struggling with that and doing it the hard way, we figured out the easy way, which is you slide it back a little bit and you pull it out right through that gap and it pops right out. So you got two little rubber bushings here that you got to keep track of. They may get stuck in the little holes there, but uh, once they come out, and then you can clean that piece up before you put it back in. So now we're gonna actually take the starter out. We gotta disconnect all the wires for the starter. <clears throat> and then we can undo the bolt. Is it just this one bolt here? Two bolts on the starter. Two bolts on the starter. And two electrical connections. Okay, so one electrical connection is just this spade connector. And the other one's on a super rusty nut. And that looks like a 12 millimeter. 13. And that's why you gotta disconnect the battery. <clears throat> it's handy if you remember to bring the key for your motorcycle, which makes it a lot easier to get the seat off. Otherwise, you got to get in there with a screwdriver and pop it off the hard way, which is exactly what we had to do because I'm an idiot and I didn't bring my key with me. There's that rusty. Now, that's definitely rusty. One bolt that goes in the starter. through this gap in the frame just like we did the cover. Did I not disconnect everything? Electrically, well, just not physically. Watch that. Is that important? It's right there. Oh, yeah, I took the, the nut off, but I didn't take the wire off, did I? Correct. Does actually come out pretty easy. Ish. Oh, why can't I remember? 
I usually take the subframes off to do this. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier if the take back half of the bike was off. Well, I'm guessing most of the time you're doing this, you're in the process of, you're definitely doing a clutch. Uh, yeah, these starters are relatively robust, so they're not coming loose. Huh. Why this is not clearing your... Oh, there we are. Come on. Oh. They go in easier. Yeah, well, it looks like we can at least clean it up. That looks pretty good. Yep. Automotive type starter, normal, like you find on a car. All right, now what are we looking for? Should be nice and dry, which it is. Yeah. What's all this gunk in the bottom of it, though? Looks like your head to me. <laughs> Let me get out of the way, then. <laughs> There's a little bit of sweat. So seepage, weepage, but not leakage? I would say so. So at... Can you see? What do you need? Something a pointy stick. That's a pointy stick. See that there? Yes. That's your friction disc. Okay. Housing cover, pressure plate. Right. So if you measure the distance between this piece here and that piece there, that'll tell you the thickness of your clutch. How do we measure that? Fixed. <laughs> yeah, now you got yourself a clutch measuring tool. It's good that the tech instructions tell you to measure the whole thing. You got four as well. I got just under five. Really? Let me see. Yeah, you did. Which puts you real close to needing it anyways. Yeah, four, if it's four point six is where it went, right? Is that yeah. What it said? Yes, it did. Four, 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 six. 